If your info tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy and a plank. Okay, so, hi everybody, welcome back to Drawing a Blank. Today we're doing something a little different. I'm here at the Potawatomi Zoo, uh, near my own hometown, and we're gonna draw some animals. It's gonna be fun. So yeah, today I went to the zoo and it was great. The animals were so lively. It was a beautiful day outside, like barely a cloud in the sky, but it was nice and cool as well. For anyone who doesn't know, I love going to zoos. I love seeing the animals, of course, but as an artist, I love zoos even more because it's a great place to bring your sketchbook and draw. And I get asked all the time to Neil, you know, how can I get better at my art? What's a good way to practice drawing and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things I always, always, always recommend to people is life drawing from real life and go to the zoo, go outside and just draw things. Uh, it's a great way to one, go out, get some exercise and just be outside for a bit. I think sometimes as artists, we tend to want to shut ourselves away and being outside can just be just like such a motivator to, and, and like just so inspiring to do art, especially if you like outdoorsy environments like I do. And then studying from real life versus just looking at pictures of animals can be so different as well. It, it's amazing how different it feels to draw an animal that you're looking at that's like two feet in front of you versus an animal that you're looking at through your computer screen. So I always recommend young artists or artists who have been doing this for a really long time to every once in a while just go outside, go to the zoo, go to the park. If you have a family animal to go outside or go to the barn and draw. So today we're going to be looking at what it is I do when I go to the zoo. And everybody's own methods are going to be a little different. You can tell me what you like to do when you draw outside. I'd love to hear what some of your guys' methods for doing this is. Uh, I love seeing people's sketchbooks of life drawing. It's so much fun. It's, you really get to see like where an artist starts by looking at like their sketches. So I want to go through some of the different kind of sketches that I do when I go to the zoo. Let's first start by talking about supplies. So some people might think that, you know, you might need specialized supplies to, to do this, but no, you really just need a, a pen or a pencil and some paper. You know, even if you just have a lined notebook, that's how I used to start all my drawings. I always drew everything in lined paper. And another thing that I would recommend for artists to try is try drawing with a pen, something you can't erase uh, so that you are just focusing on getting the lines on the paper and working from that. And you're not worried about, can I take this back? Like you're not worried about erasing what you have. Um, that way you're working quickly, efficiently, and it forces you to really know where your lines are. And I did this for a really long time where I just drew with, and not a fancy pen, like not a Micron pen or, or something you pick up at, you know, Blick or Michaels or Hobby Lobby or anything like that, but just a regular old pen that you would use at school or something like that. And I, I love sketching in pen. It, it forced me to just really be confident in working my lines. Um, if you want slightly fancier supplies, I always see it recommended to use a gray colored sketchbook paper and then have a dark pencil, like your normal dark lead pencil, and then a white pencil. That way you can really, working with the volumes. So that's kind of like the next level of drawing is, you know, now you're not necessarily working on gestures and we'll talk about that in a little bit, 
but also working with the volumes and like the highlights and the shadows and a gray gray sketchbook paper is great for getting that nice median value that way you can work on your darks and your lights but even if you just have normal sketchbook paper this will be great for doing gesture drawing it was really awesome being at the zoo and like i said earlier all the animals were so lively we just hit them at a really good time of day i think a lot of these zookeepers were out and feeding the animals so they all had a lot of energy and were all very excited hello peridot you come to visit me because i'm talking to myself into a microphone so you don't even have to go anywhere you can just if you've got a pet you can just draw them at home too so today the supplies that i'm going to be using is actually procreate on my tablet and i am using an apple pencil as my drawing tool and i'm using this so that you guys can see my drawing process because procreate is awesome and does time-lapse recordings of all my art and we're gonna get started with just some gesture drawings like i said the animals were so lively at the zoo today so in order to get some of this down to draw I had to just quickly look up at the animal and then look back down at my sketchbook paper and just quickly draw the basic shapes of the animal and I just wanted to get the motion down and the the shape down I couldn't really worry about a lot of the details of the animal because they were all moving around so much so taking pictures was helpful for me to study later on but in order to just capture the movement of the animal and the gesture of it, I wanted to just get that in really quick. So here you can see me drawing some lemurs, which were adorable. They were hopping around. And then also some flamingos, which were also very lively. They were all like preening their feathers. It was super cute. It's crazy watching the flamingos how much they can actually bend their necks to really clean all their feathers and you forget how so like sometimes you take for granted how flexible some animals are now we can move on from the gesture drawings and i wanted to do some more study like drawings as well so sometimes i go to the zoo and i just want to do gesture drawings um a lot of times i will do this if i'm with a group of friends or if you're with your family and they're kind of wanting to move along faster than you doing quick gesture drawings like this is a really great way to get things down quickly and then you can snap a few photos and keep moving along and you don't have to stop everybody so that you can draw but i was luckily with a group of friends who didn't mind if we just kind of sat on the bench and I could draw for a little while. So I did some studies of buffalo and anteaters. In drawing both the buffalo and the anteater, I'm really trying to capture the shape of the animal and the volume, like the, the mass of the animal, um, especially in the buffalo, because it's a creature I'm very unfamiliar with and they're just so giant. <laughs> they're so big it's a challenge to capture that in a drawing but I had a lot of fun with that and then I also had a ton of fun looking at the anteaters and drawing the anteaters they're so beautiful with their like wild looking bodies and like the crazy stripe they have down their back it's so striking I really enjoyed how my anteater turned out and of course it's an animal I'm not super familiar with drawing, so that was a lot of fun too, taking me a little bit out of my comfort zone. We also, of course, spent a fair amount of time over by the lions and the tigers. I love this old man lion they have over at this zoo because he is like 20 years old, he's a very old man, and he was just laying out in the sun, having a good time, just kind of resting. But he was also still pretty active for today and he, he was making a blip <laughs> with his tongue and it was so cute. And then we swung over by the tiger exhibit and the tigers were again very active and very lively. Uh, I really love this zoo that is near me because it has such really great enclosures for all these animals. You can tell that a lot of the animals really love moving around in their enclosures and that's always great to see. I love well-kept zoos. 
and this tiger was having fun kind of like splashing around in the water a little bit and you know hanging out with the other tiger nearby there's actually at one point I was sitting next to the enclosure and the tiger kind of hopped up on the glass next to me and was pawing at the glass and I was just I was having a good time watching him but I was very glad that glass was in between me and the tiger but in order to capture this tiger, I actually just had to use the reference photo, which I'm very glad I took. And this was then a great way to also study color. So this one was drawn after we were done at the zoo. And I just looked at my reference photos and I was able to draw from that. So we got a nice wide variety of different ways to draw while you are trying to draw from real life. We have quick gesture drawings that kind of are, are done on the go and are just trying to capture the basic motion, basic shape. We've got drawings that are more so trying to capture a uh, study of the animal or the volume and shape of it um, while you're there watching and studying it. And then we have ones that are drawn after the fact and I'm just looking at my own reference photos. So there's all different kinds of ways and I'm sure you guys will come up with your own different kinds of ways to draw while you're at the zoo but if this interests you I highly recommend that you do this as an artist because it's just so much fun it's so inspiring to watch animals and just draw from real life and I love doing it and if you guys like this video I will probably try and do more real life studies like this in the future. I did a more free form script this time. I didn't really script anything out for this video. I mostly just kind of talked about my own process. And if you guys would like to see more of that, I would be happy to make more videos like this. I also got lots and lots and lots of different reference photos to use for drawing in the future. So that's fantastic. Until next time, I hope you all are having a fantastic week, and please remember to stay inspired.